Supreme Court says the mediation proceedings have not resulted in resolution of the Ayodhya land dispute to commence the day-to-day -day hearing from the 6th of August. The Apex Court are centred to take decision by 14th August on Coliseum's recommendation to appoint Justice A.K. A. A. Qureshi as the Chief Justice of Madhya Pradesh High Court. Parliament passes Unlawful Activities Prevention Amendment Bill 2019. The Union Home Minister Amit Shah justifies amendments seeking to declare individuals as terrorists, noting that they create new organizations once banned. Assures that no one's human rights will be violated, the forced scrutiny will be there. India reiterates its stance, saying any discussion on Kashmir with Pakistan will take place bilaterally. The External Affairs Minister Dr. S.J. Shankar gives a strong message to the U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo in the bilateral meeting in Bangkok. In international news, the U.S. and Russia walk away from the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, putting an end to a landmark arms control treaty. The U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres expresses concern over the developments. Sports News, England trailed by 274 runs at the Stumps on day one in the first Ashes Test. Smith scores 144 runs to take Australia to 284 in its first innings in Birmingham. Hello and good evening. You're watching Doordarshan News with me, Nancy Kohli. A top story, Supreme Court order, day-to-day -day hearing from the 6th of August of the politically sensitive Ram Janmabhoomi Babri Masjid land dispute case after noting that the mediation proceedings to resolve the dispute amicably have failed. A five-judge constitution bench headed by the Chief Justice Ranjan Gogoi took note of the report of the three-member mediation panel headed by former Apex Court judge FMI Kalifulla that its effort to find an amicable solution to the dis dispute have failed. And the news now from Parliament. Well, the Parliament on Friday approved an amendment to the anti-terror law to give powers to the central government to designate an individual as terrorist and seize his properties. While the Lok Sabha had passed the Unlawful Activities Prevention Amendment Bill 2019 that seeks to amend the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act 1967 on 24th July, the Rajya Sabha approved it by voice vote after rejecting an opposition-sponsored motion to send it to select committee with 104 votes against it as compared to 85 in the favour. The House passed the amendment to the law with 147 votes in favour and 42 against it. Replying to a debate on the amendment, Home Minister Amir Shah said that a four-level scrutiny has been provided in the amendment and no human rights will be violated. He said declaring individuals as terrorists is required as they flow different organizations once an institution is banned. NIA has been the law of 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 ये जब करते हैं तो चिदंबरम जी ने कहा कि भाई संस्था तो व्यक्ति से बनती है जब संस्था को आप आतंकवादी घोषित करते हो तो व्यक्ति को घोषित करने की जरूरत क्या है मेरा तर्क भी आतंकवादी व्यक्ति को घोषित करने के लिए यही भी है कि संस्था व्यक्ति से बनती है इसके संविधान से नहीं बनती एक संस्था पर प्रतिबंध लगाते हैं वो दूसरी संस्था खोल लेते हैं Union Home Minister Misha also lauded the track record of the NIA in conviction in the terror cases, calling the agency's track record as outstanding. NIA के आंकड़े रखना चाहता हूँ। 31 सात 2019 तक NIA ने कुल 278 मामले ये कानून के अंतर्गत रजिस्टर किए। 278 मामलों में से 204 मामलों में आरोप पत्र दायर किया गया है और कुल 54 मामलों में अब तक फैसला आया है और 54 में से 48 मामलों में सजा हुई तो सजा का दर 91 प्रतिशत है और मैं गर्व के साथ कहना चाहता हूं सभापति महोदय दुनिया भर की सभी एजेंसियों में सजा का दर अपनी एनआईए का सबसे ज्यादा है इस सदन के दिन 
Moving on now, the people of Vadodara breathed a sigh of relief as the rain stopped and the water began receding, bringing some respite to the residents. The state chief minister, Vijay Rupani, announced that the compensation would be given to those who were evacuated during the rescue operations. He also announced the compensation of 4 lakh rupees to the kin of those who lost their lives in the rain-related incidents. The situation is now getting back to normal quickly due to decrease in the level of River Vishwamitri and the Ajwa Dam. The efforts are on to resume water and electric supply. Heavy rains have thrown life out of gear in many cities of Gujarat. Five persons were killed and over 5,000 were evacuated from Vadodara and surrounding areas in central Gujarat that was battered by nearly 500 millimeters of rains in 24 hours till Thursday morning. And while the roads were unusable due to water logging and several trains were also cancelled, the operations at the Vadodara airport resumed late Thursday evening. A heartwarming video of a Gujarat cop saving a baby from floods in Vadodara has gone viral. The video shows Officer Govind Chawla carrying a 45-day-old infant in a tub over his head while wading through at least four feet water. The sub-inspector Govind Chawda rescued the baby girl from Devipura locality near Vishwa Mitri railway station in the wee hours this morning. Now the child was dead, so it was very difficult to rescue her, because she didn't understand anything. And we couldn't get her, we couldn't get her good. That's why she was able to rescue her, she was able to see her. तो वहाँ उनके घर में एक प्लास्टिक का जो टब पड़ा था नहाने का उसके ऊपर नजर गई और उसी में फिर लाने का हम लोगों ने सोच लिया क्योंकि प्लास्टिक पानी में तैरता है इसकी वजह से फिर दिक्कत थोड़ी कम आएगी तो उसका जो टॉवेल था उसी में उसको लपेट के जो सोई हुई थी लड़की उसको सोते हुए ही हमने वहाँ से रेस्क्यू किया और जो दोरी हम लोगों ने बांधी थी उसके जरिए मैंने मेरे सर के ऊपर उसको टोपली रख के फिर उसको रेस्क्यू किया और हमको भी ऐसा हुआ कि भी आज हमने कुछ हमारी ड्यूटी में कुछ ऐसा काम किया है जो शायद जिंदगी में दोबारा मिले ना मिले कोई Meanwhile, relief and rescue works are running in full swing. Five additional NDRF teams have been deployed across Vadodara. The teams were airlifted from Pune yesterday. As of now, total 20 NDRF teams are deployed in the flood-affected Vadodara. Two columns and also two columns of the army have also been deployed in the city. And just as Vadodara heaved a sigh of relief after 24-hour rainfall came to a halt yesterday, a new threat emerged as crocodiles were spotted in the waterlogged streets. The Vishwamitri River, which flows through the heart of Vadodara, is home to over 260 crocodiles and is currently flowing well over the danger mark. In the videos from different locations across Vadodara shared on Twitter, while these crocodiles can be seen lurking and swimming in the flooded streets. So far, the officials and the forest department and the NGOs have rescued three crocodiles. People there are having to face difficult times there in Vadodara. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Modi has assured all possible help to Gujarat to cope with the flood situation. The Chief Minister Vijay Rupani tweeted to inform this. He tweeted, I quote, had a detailed telephonic conversation with Prime Minister Modi ji about the flood situation in Vadodara briefed him about the situation and the efforts made by the state government. He further said that Prime Minister Modi ji assured me of all the possible help and assistance from the central government to meet the relief and rehabilitation efforts. I am thankful to Prime Minister Modi ji for his guidance and support." Unquote. Moving on now to news from the courts, the Supreme Court has kept in abeyance its earlier order by which it had transferred from Rai Bareilly in Uttar Pradesh to Delhi the accident case in which the Unaure survivor was severely injured. A bench comprising Chief Justice Ranjan Gogoi and Justice Deepak Gupta took note of the submission of the Solicitor General Tushar Mehta appearing for the CBI that the accident took place last Sunday and the investigation was in progress. Mehta said that since the probe in the accident was still pending, the case cannot be transferred under the provisions of the law and sought indulgence of the bench that its transfer be kept in abeyance till the conclusion of the probe. 
and the Supreme Court on Friday directed the center to take a decision by 14th August on the Apex Court Coalition's recommendation to appoint Justice A.A. Qureshi as the Chief Justice of the Madhya Pradesh High Court. A bench headed by Chief Justice Ranjan Gogoi was told by the Solicitor General Tushar Mehta, appearing for the centre, that the Union government be given 10 days more for taking decision as Parliament was still in session. The bench was hearing a PIL filed by the Gujarat High Court Advocates Association seeking a direction to the centre to act upon the 10th May recommendation of the Collegium to appoint Justice Qureshi, who is currently the Bombay High Court judge, as the Chief Justice of the Madhya Pradesh High Court. In some other news now, Tripura Panchayat election saw a resounding victory for the ruling BJP government in the state. The Bharati Janata Party clearly made deep inroads in just concluded three-tier Panchayat elections, with the BJP getting 638 seats out of 833 Gram Panchayats. In the Panchayat Samiti, out of 419 seats, the BJP won 411. In the Zilla Parishad, out of 116, the BJP won 114 seats. And out of total 6,111 Gram Panchayats, the BJP won around 5,900 seats. While the win for the Bharati Janata Party has stamped the developmental agenda that is shown by the Biplab Deb run state government. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Modi in a tweet said, I quote, Tripura's faith in the BJP for India remains unwavering. I thank the people of the state for blessing the party in the Panchayat elections across the state. The transformative work in Tripura's rural areas is positively impacting many lives. Kudos to the local unit for the hard work. I would urge the BJP for India Karyakartas from other states to interact with the Karyakartas from Tripura. The party's repeated success in the state demonstrates the power of development politics and democratic temperament. It also shows that with the right effort, anything is possible." Unquote. Union Law Minister and Senior BJP Leader Ravi Shankar Prasad has expressed happiness over BJP's victory in the Panchayat elections in Tripura. He also said that the left has lost its ground in the state. Notably, in the recently concluded Panchayat elections in Tripura, the BJP has registered a landslide victory in the elections. For 25 years, Tripura has been a big deal. This time, it has not been a big deal. The most unique part of this election is that though Tripura has been the citadel of the left movement, CPM in particular, they did not get a single seat. Bengal में आपने देखा 18 लोकसभा जीते हैं। तो जहाँ जहाँ वामपंथ का गढ़ था, वहाँ भाजपा पहुँच रही है। Bharatiya Janata Party MP Rupa Ganguly and other party MPs from West Bengal today held a protest in Parliament over the law and order situation in the state. And speaking with Doordarshan News, Rupa Ganguly said that the killing and accusing party workers is in the false cases is very unfortunate. Har ek din kuch na kuch Pashchim Bengal mein aur khas karke agar aap Bharati Janata Party ke karya karta ho, to wo to aap bas gaye. False case, marna, mar ke tang dena, kuch bhi karna khata bhi nahi ho raha. पकड़ पकड़ के हर दिन कुछ ना कुछ उल्टा सीधा शर्मनाक सरकार की परिस्थिति है In news now from Jammu and Kashmir, where one army jawan was martyred in a nocturnal encounter in Shopia in the wee hours today. The army launched search operations in midnight hours in a Pandushan village area in Shopia to track down the terrorists. During the exchange of fire, two other jawans were injured, and according to reports, one of them is still critically injured. The counter operation is underway in the village and at least two terrorists are believed to be trapped. Now assuring that the situation at the LOC is under control, the commander of the Chinar Corps, Lieutenant General KJS Thilan said that though Pakistan made several infiltrations attempts, India always gave them a befitting reply. The infiltration from Pakistani side is being attempted regularly and we have been having regular contacts on the line of control whereby the infiltration bids by Pakistan army and the terrorist is being filed and replied to on regular basis 
all these things are an indication that Pakistan and Pakistan army is desperate to disrupt the peace in Kashmir Valley. And I can assure you on behalf of the team security force here, this will not be allowed to happen. Designs of Pakistan and Pakistan army will be foiled at all costs. Moving on now, the External Affairs Minister Dr. S.J. Shankar has made it clear to his American counterpart Mike Pompeo that any discussion on Kashmir with Pakistan will take place bilaterally if required. The minister in a tweet said that he has conveyed to his American counterpart Mike Pompeo this morning in clear terms that any discussion on Kashmir, if at all warranted, will only be with Pakistan and only bilaterally. Unquote. The External Affairs Minister met the U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo on the sidelines of the second day of the 9th East Asia Summit Foreign Ministers Meeting in Bangkok. And earlier today, U.S. President Donald Trump had said that America could assist in resolution of Kashmir issue between India and Pakistan. Moving on now, India has replied back to the offer of consular access to Kulbushan Jadav. Sources tell that Pakistan has been asked on Thursday to provide unimpeded consular access to Kulbushan Jadav in an environment free from the fear of intimidation and reprisal in the light of the orders of the International Court of Justice at The Hague. Now, Pakistan's response is now awaited. Earlier, Pakistan had said that uh, had, had in fact offered consular access to Kulbushan Jadav on Friday. The Pakistani Foreign Office spokesperson informed this on Thursday. That's two weeks after the World Court had ordered Islamabad to allow Indian officials to meet Kulbushan Jadav. The move comes two weeks after the ICJ had ordered Pakistan on 17 July to undertake an effective review and reconsideration of the conviction and sentence of Kulbushan Jadav and also to grant consular access to India without any further delay. Jadav, a retired Indian Navy officer, was sentenced to death by a Pakistani military court on the charges of espionage and terrorism in April 2017, following which India had moved the International Court of Justice, seeking a stay on his death sentence and further remedies. The United States and Russia both walked away from the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, putting an end to a landmark arms control treaty that President Ronald Reagan and Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev signed three decades back. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres is concerned with the rising tensions between nuclear armed states with the expiration of the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty. I am troubled by growing friction among the two largest global economies. We need to learn the lessons of the Cold War and avoid a new one. Looking into the not so distant future, I see the possibility of the emergence of two competing blocs, each with their own dominant currency, trade and financial rules, their own internet and artificial intelligence strategy, and their own contradictory geopolitical and military views. We still have time to avoid this. And moving on now to some more news from around the world. The South Korean presidential office uh, convened an emergency security meeting to discuss what appeared to be North Korea's third missile launch in just over a week. South Korea's military said unidentified short-range projectiles were fired on Friday from North Korea's South Hamyong province into the East Sea. The Japanese government officials said that North Korean projectiles launched early Friday are believed to be short-range ballistic missiles. Korea fired at least one short-range ballistic missile on 29th of May that landed in the east coast of its sea, the latest in a series of missile tests defying world pressure and the threats of more sanctions. North Korea has a large stockpile of the short-range missiles originally developed by the Soviet Union. Moving on now, days after the successful launch of India's second lunar mission, Chandrayaan-2, the Indian Space Research Organization has invited people to share their favorite childhood memories about the moon. 
Isro took to Twitter to extend the invite and said that the most amazing childhood memories about Moon might get a chance to be featured on its social media handles. Moving on now to sports news, while well, Steve Smith made a magnificent 144 on his return to Test cricket after the ball tampering scandal to halt England's charge on the opening day of the Ashes at Ed Bastion. The former captain dragged the tourist from 120 to 48 to 284 all out, with England surviving two overs to close on 10 for no loss to delight the partisan crowd. Smith joining teammates David Warner and Cameron Bancroft in making his test comeback was booed to the crease and witnessed a collapse of five wickets for 23 runs from the non-strikers end. Smith, who was on 85 when he was joined by last man Nathan Lyon, drove Ben Stokes for four to reach his 24th test century, then cut loose to punish the weary bowlers. When Smith was eventually bowled to give Stuart Broad his fifth wicket, Rory Burns and Jason Roy negotiated an awkward period in the gloom without alarm. Sony Pat's uh, Sona Malik won her second gold medal at the Cadet uh, World Wrestling Championship in Sofia, Bulgaria. Sona won the 65 kilogram gold after beating Bin Bin Xiang of China 7 1 in the finals. Sona beat Lillian Allen of the US 7 1 in the last eight before overcoming Ekaterina of Russia 4 1 in the semi finals. The 17-year-old from Medina village in Sonipat has now become a two-time cadet world champion, having also won gold in 2017. In 2018, she had won the bronze medal. And in badminton, B-Sai Praneet sailed into the quarterfinals and stormed into the last eight round with a comfortable 21-18, 21-19 win over compatriot Shubhankar Day. Kidambi Srikant, Parupali Kashyap and HS Pranoy all crashed out in the second round. Srikant lost to Khosit Petrabab of Thailand, Kashyap to Chao Tin Chen of China and Pranoy to Kenta Nishimoto of Japan. And in the women's single, seven seed Saina Nehewal, who returned to the action after nearly two months, squandered a game advantage to lose against unseeded Sayaka Takahashi of Japan in the second round. And in the mixed doubles, the pair of Satvik, Sairaj, Ranki, Reddy and Chirak Shetty moved into the quarterfinals after registering a straight game win over Indonesian combination of Ajar Alfian and Mohammad Riyan Ardianto. The Indian duo will next play qualifiers Choi Sol Gyu and Siu Song Jie of Korea tomorrow. And soccer fans in South Korea are taking legal route to seek compensation after Cristiano Ronaldo failed to play in a friendly during Juventus's pre-season tour in Seoul last week. Ronaldo had been contracted to play at least 45 minutes against K-League All-Stars, according to event organizers, but ultimately he sat out the entire game at a packed Seoul World Cup stadium. An online community was formed on South Korea's web portal to protest Ronaldo's lack of participation and two members reached out to lawyer Kim Min Ki to file a lawsuit against the match organizers. While the lawsuit is seeking compensation of 70,000 won per ticket, that's 1,000 won for the ticket commission free and 1 million won each for compensation for what they call a mental anguish. And Arsenal have signed forward Nicolas Pe from French club Lille for a club record fee. He's now the most expensive African footballer of all times. The 24-year-old Ivory Coast international signed a five-year deal and will wear the number 19 shirt at the London club. He becomes the fourth most expensive signing in the Premier League history after Manchester United duo Paul Pogba and Romelu Lukaku and Liverpool defender Virgil van Dijk. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of the news. But news and updates will continue here on Doordarshan News for the moment. Thanks for being with us.